How to solve a crime with graph theory. Say we've caught three thieves, Alice, Bob and Charlie, or A, B and C. Each of them have given a statement containing an accusation. A says, I'm not the thief. B says, A is the thief. And C says, I'm not the thief. We also know that only one of them is telling the truth. Can we work out who the thief is? Well, the answer is yes, and it's quite easy. Suppose A was the thief. Then B would be telling the truth, but so would C. So two people appear to be telling the truth, when we know that there should only be one. So A can't be the thief. If B is the thief, then both A and C are telling the truth, so B can't be the thief either. If C is the thief, then B is lying, but A is telling the truth. This is the only case that is logically consistent with the fact that only one person is telling the truth. So we've deduced that only C can be the thief. That was quite a simple logic problem, and it's quick to solve. But what if we had more suspects, say four or five, and with a more complicated set of accusations? Can we find a quicker method to solve these kind of problems? Let's take each suspect and represent them as a small dot in space, or a node. Now, B always accuses A, so we could represent this by drawing a directed line from B to A. C says they're not the thief, but we could think of this as being equivalent to accusing everyone else, both B and A. So C has a line going to B and a line going to A. Similarly, A says they're not the thief, so they accuse both B and C. This kind of diagram is what we call a graph, so how can we use it to solve the crime? Let's go over the cases we considered. If A is a thief, we'll redraw the graph, ignoring all the lines coming out of A. B accuses A, so they have a line going into A. And C accuses both B and A, so they also have a line directed into A. Only one person is telling the truth. This means that there should only be one line going into A. Since there are two, A can't be the thief. If we consider B to be the thief, again ignoring all the lines going out of B, we see that there are still two lines directed into B, the two accusations from A and C. This would mean that both A and C were telling the truth, so this can't be the case. Finally, we come to C. B always accuses A, so it has no line directed into C, but there is an accusation from A. So there's only one line going into C, and only one person telling the truth. This is the only logically consistent case, so C is the thief. Now, we've established a kind of very short algorithm. Take a node, and add up the number of lines going into it. This will give us the number of people telling the truth, if that person is the thief. Then move on to the next node, and repeat. So with three people, this method wasn't much quicker than just going through each person case by case. But say we have four people, A, B, C, and D, and only one of them is telling the truth. A, B, and C give the same statements as before, and D says B is the thief. We can draw a graph filling in the lines coming from A, B, C, and D. Looking at A, we see two lines going in, and for B, there are three lines going in. C has one, and D has two. This list gives us a number of people that would be telling the truth. So, if one person were telling the truth, C is again the thief. Say, however, we know that three people are telling the truth, then we can immediately see that B is the only case where three people can be telling the truth, and therefore B is the thief. If there are two people telling the truth, then we have two possible solutions, A or D, so it could be either of them. However, without more information, we can't tell exactly which one, but we do know that it's definitely not B or C. So we formed a list that gives us all of the possible solutions. For any set of suspects and accusations, we could just form this list and match the numbers to how many people are telling the truth, to give us the suspects that could have committed the crime. This all works great for logic problems, but can it be applied in the real world? Well, yes. This method of solving problems can be done pretty quickly by a human, but with artificial intelligence and computer science being so important, mathematicians and scientists need to develop system solutions that can be easily implemented into a computer program. As luck would have it, coding computers to follow an algorithm like this is remarkably easy, so you could in theory write a program that uses this method to find all of the possible solutions for a much larger set of suspects, say 100 of them, and it can be done in a much, much shorter amount of time. The important take home from this is that if you play around with a problem enough, you can always find a way to apply some cool maths.